First of all, before we take a look at some of these beautiful knives, and I am, we're gonna get some really good close-ups of these knives. We're gonna have a, a real good look-see. Uh, it's gonna be some really beautiful eye candy for sure. Um, let me, we're just gonna say goodbye to a few knives that I've had in my collection for quite a while. And uh, two of these are Case Selects, and um, they are gonna be going away. And I am gonna be posting these most likely on eBay. eBay seems to just get me the best prices. It really does, I really like eBay a lot. Um, this is a saddle horn. This beautiful box that it comes in, just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful presentation box. But by all means, yes, um, these will probably already be listed by the time this video is on YouTube. Now the blades are ATS 34. Just, they're so beautiful. Look at this, check this out. Also has a different Tang stamp, C Platts and Sons. Beautiful scales, huh? Look at that nice shield on there. Real nice Tony Bowes um, design. Nice half stop on both blades. Real nice. Now this is not the machined type. That would be more or less more like one of these, which would be like one of your millennial knives or anniversary yearly Tony Bowes knives, which is completely machined, the entire knife. So you have a relief in there so your tang doesn't get scratched up. Pretty knife, huh? You know, this is a good video to share with your friends and also hit that bell notification. If you want to show your friends why, what is, what's the point? Why do you, why do I collect um, knives? I'm going to kind of hit on that today. And the reason I collect knives and why do I like these traditional type knives? You know, each one of them tells a story and they and when you pick them up a lot of times they'll have a sometimes they'll have a feeling of solidness that you don't get from items of today you know it has a feeling of quality that we're not really used to and it feels good there's something about it that really is neat here's another case select and the case selects are generally nickel silver bolsters, nickel silver liners and all that. A little bit fancier, more of a top shelf knife. And this one is no different. What are the benefits of not having uh, brass bolsters? Well, brass bolsters are nice because they don't, they tend not to scratch up your tang, right? And that's what the purpose was. And plus it's a cheaper material. But brass bolsters can have a tendency to bleed over and maybe damage your knives if you don't store them properly. And here's a fine example of a more maker made by Queen. And you can see that when stored wet, a lot of times when you get that bleed from the corrosive green that brass will sometimes produce and that green will soak into those bone scales. So that's something to be conscious, conscious of. You know, each additional upgrade a knife has does have a benefit and there's a reason for everything, whether it's pinch bolsters. Why would, why would pinch bolsters be maybe a, a thing. Why would a, why would pinch bolsters be more convenient than maybe a knife that doesn't have pinch bolsters, which most trappers do. 
Um, but I'm gonna probably pick more of a working man's knife because some of the working man's knives wouldn't. Here's a good example. Here's a working man's knife. It has slightly pinched bolsters, which, but the pinched bolsters allow it to slide in and out of the pocket better. So it's just in a, it's just one more step that the knife maker has to go through. And when you're making, you know, a thousand knives, that step um, counts. That step could potentially, <clears throat> oh, I ruined my whole knife. So each step that a knife has um, costs money, time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Um, so let me see. That is one case select. Here is another case select that I'm going to let go. Why my case selects? I'm just uh, it's not part of my collection anymore. Has all the paperwork. This is Macedon ivory. So this is fossilized ivory, most likely Russian. I'd have to read the paperwork. It probably says. Um, and this is petrified ivory from from Macedon from uh, what are those mammoth tusks excuse me I'm sounding like I need to grab a fifth grader to help me out with this let me uh this is a nice knife real pretty isn't that nice looking Feels really nice. It's uh, really smooth. Very yeah, feels like ivory. It's really neat when you really think about it. It's fossilized ivory. It's really gorgeous. They did a real classy job. Just neat. Has a nice liner lock. Closes on up. Real smooth. It's a real smooth knife. Be a nice knife to, to carry, huh? I love that. That's beautiful. They did a really nice job with this one. Isn't she gorgeous? And she go back in her little cave. Kind of like so. Okay. All right, so let's uh, dig into this knife roll. What do you guys say? Um, so we'll move this out of the way like Mr. Rogers would. Ooh, real nice walk and talk, right? Case XX, 70s knife. Just a real pretty knife. Um, why did I put this in my collection? Uh, because there's lots of knives that are really awesome that Case made. Um, well, the walk and talk is great, which is expected for, for a knife that is in my collection. I really like, I just really like the blades on this thing. They just, it just seems, they just seem a lot thicker, bulkier. They just did a really nice job with this knife. It just really is built nice. And I can't say that all case knives were built nice. Just beautiful. Here's another one, a little bit discoloration on this one. This one is from, oh, this is from Case XX USA One Dot. Yeah, this is just a beautiful knife. I don't know why it's got some striping, got a little cracking. So, you know, the, the handles on these yellow ones tend to be a little bit um, um, subject to cracking, and that can happen. This is a nice one, really nice one. So I, I got those at the Case Knife Show when I was with my wife. Uh, it's got some memories to them. I like them. I think they're just really incredible. When I picked it up, it, the knife felt a lot heavier than expected, and that kind of goes back to... Uh, the Sabri that I put into my collection that I just entered into my collection. This Sabri is made by Schrade, a very unknown company. You can pick these up for $30 on eBay right now. 
And these are just fantastic. I actually are keeping mine because I think the values will go up. I just think it's a great knife also. It's well worth 30 bucks and it feels a lot heavier and chunkier than expected it. So it has a really nice feeling to it. And uh, that's important to knife guys. I'm a knife guy. Knife. Oh, here's one that's in my collection. This one I really like. This is an old fight and rooster that had celluloid degassing happening to it. And what does that mean? That means it's degassing. It destroyed the blades, corrosion everywhere. So I sent this into a buddy of mine and along with some stag along that I stag, I mean, that I picked out and muskrat man fitted it and cleaned up the knife for me. He actually initialed it on the inside with a COA. So it's not like it's a counterfeit knife by any means, but just a really cool pattern too. Fight and Rooster has some of the nicest knives. They really do. Let's see if you guys can see me. Can't. Nice walk and talk. It's got this really convenient, awesome, and this really deep etch. Talk about a nice knife. You can get these Fight and Roosters online and they're pretty affordable because a lot of them are degassing and when they degas, people just want to get rid of them. And, you know, practice your knife making skills or send it in to somebody that can maybe do a nice job on it. And boy, it's, it's a beautiful knife. All right, one more knife and we'll move on, we'll move on, we'll move on. Let me see, oh, an electrician's knife for one of my electrician buddies. This is an electrician knife. This is what electricians used to carry. This one's made in Germany of all places. Boker USA, excuse me. Boker USA, tree brand. Uh, most likely, you know, made in Germany. Uh, yeah, beautiful back springs. Look at that. So I put this in my collection because of the build quality. I don't know much about this company also. It's the only one from this company that I know I've, Couple other, couple others from this company. I'll show you after that. And then these things have to release, push center lock to the left, which is a just instructions on how to. And it's a locking screwdriver and wire stripper. How cool is that? And to unlock it, you push this to the side. Close it. Real nice build quality. It's got a nice little lanyard loop. Just a great little knife. Here's another one from Boker. And then uh, we'll say our goodbyes. How about that? This one's... Just really nice. The build quality is one of those premium stock knife. Yeah, it's one of those knives where when you pick it up, you're just like, whoa, this is pretty nice. So the etch says, made in Germany. How cool is that? Really nice feel to these bone scales. Amazing. And this dog leg jack is just awesome too. Look at this knife, man. This is, this is Case putting a knife out of this quality for a couple hundred bucks. Wow. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, take care. Enjoy a thumb up. Come on, sub and uh, hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uh, selling some knives. Take care.